speaker of today is James Zulfan. He was a, a MSc student uh, who finished in 2017, and he actually did his uh, master thesis together with me. And he's working, and he was also already working as a researcher in, for the Ministry of Infrastructures and uh, Housing, if I understand, yeah. of Indonesia, Jakarta. And uh, he has been working on, a, uh, let's say, a, a modular wheel that has um, there are strong innovative aspects, and for this he won two prizes. One is the prize called the Falling Walls Lab, that is a, a German prize for innovation in technology, and he won the prize for Indonesia, and, and then recently went to Berlin to present his, uh, his uh, say, uh, structure, modular structure. And then he also won another prize, which is the Euraccess Prize, for 2019 that allowed him to travel around Europe and to visit uh, laboratories. So now we have James Sulfan showing uh, his modular uh, wheel and the, the, let's say what, uh, he, what he uh, made him win these prizes. Okay, James, this is time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, I already been introduced. So my name is James Zulfan, and today I will uh, will be sharing my uh, research uh, together with our colleagues in Indonesia uh, to developing a modular construction in hydraulic structure. So yeah, this is uh, just the outline of my presentation today. Uh, just about the background of Indonesian current states and then the problem that we are facing and the modular wear finally. Yeah, this is just to remind me that uh, in 2017, <laughs> uh, I joined IHC in SR Hydraulic Engineering and Reprovision Development in 2015 and graduated in 2017 and then I returned back to my uh, institute in Indonesia to the Ministry of uh, Public Works and Housing uh, and work as a researcher in uh, water resource divisions. Yeah, so uh, the reason why uh, I came here this, uh, this time is because uh, I follow uh, the Falling Walls uh, Foundations uh, conference uh, lately. It, it was uh, last week in Berlin because uh, I somehow already mentioned that it was like a competition or innovation competition for young people that they are scouting from like more than 70 countries uh, around the world and then the winner will get to Berlin and then competing them again. So yeah, I'm also encouraging to you to follow this one because uh, it held every year and like uh, maybe the nearest uh, in the Netherlands, I think it's in Groningen. So maybe you can uh, check uh, where's the nearest uh, place to get uh, into. It's very really nice. And yeah, I just want to show you the uh, where is Indonesia. Maybe you, some of you don't know where it is. So Indonesia is uh, placed here, the location. So it's quite far to go to uh, Europe actually. And we are uh, categorized as a maritime uh, countries. And yeah. So, this is just to show you that uh, our potential in water resource uh, in Indonesia, the, uh, these pictures just show the potential of surface water uh, in the whole Indonesia that we already uh, map, mapping all around. And you can see that the green is indicated that it is a, have a surplus uh, water resource uh, between the ratio with the uh, the number of the people who live and then you can see the red one is the one who have a deficit uh, ratio so you can see that the red one this one because uh, this is the most crowded island in Indonesia because the, the capital is recently uh, here in Jakarta that now also uh, in the coming years we are 
planning to move the capital into Borneo. So as you can see, it's still very light green. <laughs> the peso is still uh, surplus based on this uh, research. And then, yeah, in the Ministry of Public Works and Housing, we are dealing with the infrastructure uh, development. In my division is in water resource. So uh, in the period of 2015 to 2019, we have a very, uh, we aim high. So this is the target of our uh, divisions that in Indonesia, uh, for example, we want to build 65 dams in five years. But it's, it was a total, so uh, inside there are already uh, the continuous uh, project already going on, but then we also trying to like, uh, start in a new one. But in the end, like in 2017, this year, by the end of this year, we only uh, achieved 55 that are already like, uh, yeah, signed up by the president. So, and the rest, also the other, uh, this is the target, but most of them we only uh, maybe receive, uh, achieve 80 to 85 percent of the target. And this is also the, yeah, one of the challenges in uh, water resource uh, structures in Indonesia. We have lots of different structures, maybe due to uh, high degrees and the type of the Stylic structure which is not really uh, adaptable to the rivers, and also we have illegal sand mining everywhere, which is will make the river morphology uh, worse. Especially if you have uh, hydraulic structures in the upstream of uh, the location of the sand mining. Uh, yeah, and. Just to show you that uh, our uh, recent research that's showing that the condition of the infrastructure, especially swales in Indonesia, so if we can uh, just generalize that 54% is in a good condition, meaning still uh, function well, and also we have 30% uh, which are have light damage, maybe some cracks, but still uh, doesn't interrupt the functions. And also we still have uh, set about 17% that have, we call it medium damage, because maybe for this case that the upstream of the dikes maybe uh, is damaged, but then your intake in the other part of the uh, structure is still uh, working. And also we have the one that are heavily damaged, that are completely the structure is maybe passed away and destroyed. So this uh, kind of uh, <coughs> condition give us just insight that we are still having lots of uh, homework to do to uh, working on especially the heavily damaged conditions. And yeah, so. I was working in the Ministry of Public Works, and uh, this, we have our own uh, research institute that we also have a hydraulic laboratory like this. That all the problem that we face uh, on the field, on the projects, that we are trying to analyze and trying to uh, combine with new technology and then implement it. So basically, it's more applied uh, research what we are doing. So, yeah, also for the modular land that uh, I also came up with in Berlin, it's uh, the first uh, thing that we want to answer is the time and funds uh, constraints. Because, uh, yeah, currently in Indonesia we have lots of work to do, but then we also have a time limit, and also funds is also uh, very limited, so we need to find a new way to, to still have the function uh, of the wear conventionally, but use uh, the new technology that can bring it more easier, more cheaper, and more faster. So, 
yeah, just generalize it the, in conventional way. We usually do uh, for maybe wires construction. We first we uh, preparing the land and then we mobilize all the uh, all the uh, heavy equipment, heavy uh, instrument, and then all we put all the framework for frameworks, and then we pouring the cement and. We do it all over again, layer by layer, and this complexity is uh, is the reason that uh, we want to try another uh, approach. So we use uh, this modular construction ways just to uh, simplify. We want to change a bit of the method that when you are already preparing the land, that you can also start already start to fabricate and. Uh, yeah, this or maybe this order the the complete modules. But then after it finished, the, the land is already finished, and you can just meet them two together and bring all the modules that we need to the sides and start to assemble it, just like a Lego. So I think everyone knows Lego, it's like. So this is a uh, yeah, just showing that. Uh, Con the different from conventional wear and the modular wear. We still want the, to have the same functions, uh, structure, stability, but using a different approach of constructions. Yeah, now in, in modular, then we are also, uh, we'll use a modular or what you call the concrete blocks things that. This is just to show you that many types of concrete blocks is uh, module is already uh, developed, but maybe mainly used for the coastal uh, protections or coastal projects, or there is in the river, but it's also only for protection of the river banks or uh, the yeah, I mean just for protection. But uh, we want to try uh, another one to have yeah like this one, to build a structure. So this is the type of uh, PKS uh, module block that we developed. So the weight is uh, maybe lighter than the previous one. It's only 170 kilograms. And yeah, for this case, we use the reinforced concrete K300. And yeah, this is just a schematic that how we put or the rocks to become the structure that we still will have the crest and also the steering basin, the upstream floor, downstream floor, everything still the same. Uh, yeah, this is not a rocket science. I mean, just not instantly I get that module uh, type or shape instantly. So we also do. Uh, physical model tests in room and also in uh, three-dimensional model in the hydraulic lab and we try uh, each type of uh, that model so to we actually have uh, analyzed maybe more than 20 uh, types of uh, shape of this model before we came to this uh, final uh, maybe for our uh, perspective this is the most optimum one According, uh, excuse me, uh, characteristic strength of concrete. The strength of the concrete, yeah. So we are basically right now only use uh, the the quality of the concrete is decay three hundred. We haven't uh, tried another uh, what do you call the, the another quality. Uh, we are start, still trying to find the, the how to learn how the characteristic of the height maybe more to hydraulic and morphological uh, analysis. But using this K300 is is enough, yeah, yeah. But we haven't tried any other uh, material type to use uh, higher or lower quality of the concrete. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. This is maybe just the scenario of the placing things like that. So, 
it's not as easy as that in the field. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we try to implement it in uh, uh, the last one, the, the last prototype that we built is uh, placed in, we call it uh, Morotai Island. It is a very far north uh, island in Indonesia. So we want to prove uh, uh, that this, uh, uh, this method can be used in a very uh, far and very remote area, which is not needed of heavy equipment or things. So we use the lamp preparations and then we fabricate the module in the, uh, we have our batching plan. And then, yeah, we, we place all the module structures uh, complete storage for this case. Uh, I use 3,000 uh, modules unit, 3,000 units. So, and then yeah, the interesting things because the its module weight is only 170 kilos, so it's still possible to be moved uh, by three or four people manually. So I also helped by the local citizen because this way also for them, so they are really willing to do. Uh, so basically all the 3,000 blocks is uh, yeah, moved and placed by them. The hardest part is to teach them how to uh, place it, because in the first layer, when we come to the second layer, it's, it's a hard one because they I mean, still don't know uh, which part to be there and which part to be here. So we are open it up again because it's Legos, so we can just open it again. So, but after that, after they are understand how it works, it's really easy, it's really fast. And we are doing it during our summer weather, so it's really uh, easy. And then, yeah, this is uh, the results. Yeah, there's some video that I want to show you. Let's see. I'm sorry, it's in Indonesian. I haven't translated. So it's called Pilot Project of Modular Wheels. And the location is in Morotai, Maluku Utara province. So it's, uh, yeah, benefit is it's flexibility and then it's modularity <coughs> and also it's segmental so it can like divide it into parts and yeah we call it it's a kind of echo hydraulic because it's uh, adding more aeration to the downstreams and yeah this is cost effective because the time of construction can be reduced by for this case, it's 30%. So, uh, if you can cut the time limit, you can also directly, automatically have a cost efficient results. And yeah, apparently, um, until now, the project location, we already built three uh, prototype projects. And as you can see, there are three parts. We, we, it is not an uh, accidentally because uh, apparently the location project is already in three parts of Indonesia. Because in Indonesia we have three parts of uh, time zone, so it's already in three parts. So because we are working uh, as a ministry, we want to show like uh, the uh, maybe the constructor or maybe the academics there to get to know this new technology that we can apply. So when they want to see like people from the south. Uh, from the west part, you can see just uh, maybe in Chikara well, but uh, people from the east part can only see maybe the nearest one is the Tile well. So, yeah. So, the first prototype uh, is built in 2013, right before I came to IC actually. And until now, it's still uh, working, it's still functioning well as a uh, irrigation. Uh, it, it supply to irrigation, but when, actually it's not really big 
uh, just maybe uh, 50 hectares or something. But the last one, the delay where is uh, quite a uh, large area of irrigation, it's about 13, uh, 30, 300, 300 hectares, so it's growing. And it's uh, basically for the wares right now. And yeah, this is just to show you that the first time we built in 2013, the condition, and uh, in February, a uh, couple months ago, I visited them again, and it's in 2019. It's already uh, five years, and still there. Yeah, it's good things. <laughs> Yeah, we also uh, still doing the monitoring for the prototype because yeah, we want still want to see whether uh, what we can what we can improve. So if you, uh, this is what I want to show you that uh, from the first uh, prototype that we still have that uh, what you call the the, the teeth uh, going up, but then in the second and the third part uh, we make it more flat because uh, it's somehow uh, like stuck with the maybe the garbage or something in the river so it is better to have a flat uh, crest, top crest and yeah this is the latest uh, project that we are implemented in uh, Morotai Island uh, in it finished in 2018, in the end of 2018, but yeah, the width is 30 meters and the river discharge is only 100 uh, meter cubic per second and yeah, it irrigates 300 uh, irrigation area and yeah, we finish it, uh, we can generalize it, uh, if we can show it, the time limit is we finish it in just maybe six to seven months where usually conventional uh, construction used to be maybe minimum is one year actually and the cost is also reduced uh, really uh, significantly uh, because the need of concrete is also reduced also the time limit also reduced and then the need of the concrete also reduced if you can see that there is some uh, for it between the uh, concretes that they are uh, reducing the concrete. Yeah. So what's next? So we still uh, doing the monitoring to with the structure, especially the new one, because it has like the 300, uh, three, uh, 30 meters wide, and we want to see the effectiveness of taking water for the irrigations and yeah uh, we also collaborate with uh, people from the environment uh, because we want to see whether the hydrations can really uh, make a huge impact to the downstream because they say it's already like uh, adding more oxygen and everything with the turbulence and hydrations which may uh, the quality of the river downstream is better than the first one. Also, yeah, still following the seminars and conference, just to show and uh, have some feedback to improve this one. And yeah, uh, right now, right next year, we also uh, will implement this modular wheel again uh, in Java Island uh, in a more larger area. It's uh, in 90 meters wide, so it's actually three times uh, largest than the previous one, but for that we also need uh, a modification with our module that we use the same system, the same shape, but different uh, weight and uh, dimension. So we scale up the weight and its dimension because so we also need the gravity and because for the interlocking and things to hold the force and everything. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, this always that is my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, do you have questions? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I have a few, but maybe the students have questions. Okay. Um my question is 
how it, so how much water is going through the structure instead of over, and does that have any effect on the hydraulics? How, how much water flowing through? Like you talked about the voids in between the different pieces. So yeah. does any water go through those? Okay. Pieces? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Should I answer directly? Yes, of okay. course. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you just compared it to the first. Okay, so uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that because it's it is function for wheels. We we actually have two kinds of uh, types of uh, wheels. That first is uh, wheels for irrigation that we take up water to intakes and we need some levels of water, and we also have a check dam, which basically. Are the same, but we don't need any uh, intakes structure. So for the wheels for for uh, the irrigations that we need uh, some sort of level to be taken into intake, we have a small uh, we, we call it a, like a cut off wall uh, to have like a impermeable uh, what uh, border so the water will not get into the main structure, but also always overflow. Yeah, but for the check dams, uh, it is yeah we always we don't need the kind of uh, what you call it, the walls, it's the thin walls. But we all or uh, we just use pure the concrete blocks. So um, our research shows that in just one or two months, it's already. Like settled by the sediment things and everything, so it's already stabilized. Yeah, but for the wheels, it, we use the a thin, very thick, thin uh, walls. Yeah. Okay. You had questions or somebody else? Uh, no, I think uh, you were. Uh, Mario. Okay. Thank you, James. Yeah. Uh, well, I had a similar question, so it's, it's answered. And then. Um, and the second, how are the foundations of this? You didn't show. Oh. Yes, so it's basically uh, we having uh, two, two parts of uh, research. First is a more hydraulic uh, approach research, and the other one is uh, to the geotechnic team, the foundation and things. So the foundation basically is the same like any other uh, structure in the river, so we really want to have a, a good. Uh, I mean, it's be, it based on it depend on the location. So for the first uh, project in in 2013, we use like a, a shallow foundations things because it's because the as uh, in geological uh, perspective, uh, the team say that it's already like stable. So uh, it's already reached the hard uh, soil things. Yeah. So it depends. So we treat uh, differently, uh, depends on the locations, and just use uh, the geologi geological engineering uh, like the rest of the structures, like the usual structures. Yeah. And for this one, we, uh, <coughs> the one that in the, the second part, uh, the second project in uh, center of Indonesia, we don't use any foundation because it's already like a rock. Uh, base things, yeah. And for this one, the latest one, the third one in Morotai, we use uh, only like a, a yeah shell foundation, but it uses uh, not like a board pile, but more like a you have a hole and then you put it. I, I don't know. And the poles? Poles? Piles? 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 Yeah, but not really deep. Yeah, okay. yeah, we use piles. And uh, just another how do you design these things? Is it hydraulically or? stability, how do you design them? So, do you have any guidelines for design of this already? Yeah, so we, are totally, uh, we also use uh, many reference that uh, like uh, we, in Indonesia we also have our wheels called mm -hmm. design and we are like a uh, modifier because we adapt with the, the uh, modular technology and then there are some like coefficients that we change like for the uh, discharge coefficient and everything, it will be a uh, difference. So we are now like, developing the guidelines for, for this modular thing also. But the reference is still with the same uh, like old uh, 
conventional wheels design. Yeah. More questions? Uh, Miro and then... Yes, following to, to, to this question. Uh, thanks, it was very nice. Uh, the, how you design, what is the strength between the blocks? How you define this strength? Have you made any tests to see what is the, for example, shear strength for, for the rear structure? <coughs> compressive strength is compressive strength of the concrete, I would yeah, expect. Yeah. But the shear strength would be interesting. Interlocking strength. Yeah. yeah. So, so for, for the strength of the, uh, the concrete modules, it's concrete. So I have to mention first that we are uh, doing the applied uh, research. So what we are uh, doing in our lab is we try one by one the module concrete that we put in the room and then we see uh, with this type uh, for example and then we see uh, then we see like uh, how uh, or when is the concrete module start to move and everything and then if it's two blocks and if three four five until it becomes structures until we also have the criteria uh, okay uh, for this uh, kind of discharge, you we make like a graphic for this kind of discharge, you need this height of uh, layers of um, blocks, things like that. So we are not mm, into that uh, really detail with the, uh, uh, what you call the, the strength of the concrete yet, yeah, but I will put it on my notes. <laughs> uh, I have one additional question yeah. to the construction. How, how you do the how you make the diversion of the water? Are you working ah. in the water, or you have to divert? Yes. Or have you tried yeah. both both methods? I, I tried both. So the interesting is uh, yeah yeah. So the interesting is the one. So this one, the last one is. Uh, Located in a very remote area, so that we can uh, like divert the water first. We make a kind of small dams, uh, buildings just cover to them. yeah cover them. We use cover them, so it's easier to uh, work in the dry uh, place. But then the this one, the Kalisa River, is located in, inside the city, so it's uh, it's already. I mean, we cannot just make a cover dam and just uh, make a diversion channel. So for this one, we do it in a uh, wet uh, conditions, but still we choose like the right time when the water is very dry. Right. So, so yeah, in the summer things, but still. And of course, because this one, we don't need any foundations. So it's, it's basically just stand in the uh, rocks uh, land. And we also use the gel textile for the cover of map uh, below, and then we put the blocks there. Yeah. You also have a question. Hello, yes. yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks for the presentation. Yeah. Uh, I guess this is following Mario's question. Yeah. Um, you're trying now to, to, well, to use this approach in wider sections, yeah. as you said. What about higher sections? I mean, is there any sort of head limit that you that you can yeah. handle with this approach? Have you studied any, I don't know, hydraulic criteria to determine the, the, the height yeah. where you could, you could? Yeah, so actually we also uh, have some kind of criteria for this uh, based on uh, our flume uh, research in N3 dimensional uh, model in the hydraulic lab. So for this uh, type, with the 170 kilos, uh, the height is only 70 centimeters, the height of the model, and 170 kilograms. Uh, so when they are uh, set up and built up where we uh, define that the maximum of the, we, we did not define the maximum discharge or the maximum uh, width of river, because sometimes we have river smaller than the discharge is higher and everything. So we uh, make categories on the head uh, above the crest. So the head above the crest, the maximum, based on our laboratory, uh, is 4 meters. Yeah. So still, this one, 
the highest one is still just two meters uh, for this case. Yeah, but in the left it can hold like right, until four meters above the crest, the head. Yeah. yeah. And, and can you guess how how high uh, you, you you could go with this approach? Like the the the, the height of the weir yeah. itself, not S not the. Yes, so the interesting is uh, using this technique that uh, the system you can always use, but then if you have a higher discharge and higher head, you can just scale up also the uh, concrete models that it will also uh, make the head or the limit is higher again. Yeah, because for the uh, next project that we are uh, want to implement next year, the it's already reached uh, more than I mean uh, more than the, the four meters they had, but because we making more uh, the weight, so we adding the weight and also the dimension and th and other things, uh, but still using the same interlocking system, it can all that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Daniel, can you shout uh, before I need somebody? Thanks for the presentation, yeah. James. Uh, you mentioned the signals of construction and maintenance, uh, but also the people who are constructing that are not professionals. These pieces are 170 kilograms heavy. If it's people like me moving that, you need the people. <laughs> I, yeah. I wonder if you had any accident during construction, if there were any troubles. For, for this case, uh, fortunately, no. Because we are like really, uh, uh, of course, if you can see the uh, pictures, that we are not using a very, uh, very safety uh, rules and everything. <laughs> because we use like the um, local participants, like yeah. There's there's a risk that you get yes. your fingers stuck. Yes. And lose a finger. As, as far as I know, when I was there. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, so because it's heavy and something. But at least uh, the <laughs> I only use the rules uh, that they always need to use uh, shoes. Uh, Even the big shoes. The one, uh, yeah, the big shoes. Because the big shoes is apparently only like maybe 15 shoes that we are having the workers more than 30. Uh, so so we we making a group because it's. Like heavy and uh, like uh, we have kind of layers and uh, so like three or four people only move these parts. We we use like the A B C D uh, mm -hmm. in the white uh, section and then some people only work on these sides. So mm -hmm. yeah, so not the three thousand models is only moved by these four people now. <laughs> yeah, but apparently there's no accident uh, as far as I know. And yeah, because we are very uh, like. The first month, like the first one or two months, is for the learning uh, how to, uh, where to put and how to put. But after that, it's already, uh, I can leave them and they already finish it. Yeah. Thank you. And you also mentioned easiness of maintenance uh, yeah, yeah. compared to conventional wheels. Uh, which, which type of maintenance does this extraction require? And why is it easier than yeah. a conventional so concrete wheel? I think, yeah, because, yeah, because the first time. Uh, the the on is in 2013, so I, mean, I only have five years of uh, <laughs> process. <laughs> yeah, so based on that, like uh, first, because you, know, you can just go down to the city basin uh, with a step of stairs, and then if I think if, if there are some uh, maybe because of the space of the boulder, and then it cracks the first, like uh, the top. Uh, concrete, then you can just like move them up and then put it the new one, like if you already have it. Then just because I also, uh, yeah, encourage the we still have some leftover the concrete, so it's like maybe 20 or 30, and we just put it in the like the local citizens' shift things, yeah. So and then when something happens, they can just move it and yeah. Thank you. Okay. In some places we have earth, earth and material based wheels, like they, they use rocks. Mm -hmm. So how is this one efficient or how can you compare with earth and material based? 
what made you gravel and base? Yeah, I actually I haven't uh, compared to that one. Uh, I mean, uh, like economically, yeah. you know, not really. I only compare with the conventional uh, ways, like because we we are also building m many wares in with the same uh, with conventional wares. So we try to make it uh, like comparison economically and by time limit and also how the workers did because still uh, if we put like the what you call this the contract things if uh, because there are no contractor because it's still new and who wants to build it who can build it so yeah I mean we also uh, because it's still new and we also still in charge in in the uh, projects and yeah but still only compare with conventional Just a, just a session. Why do you use only wares and you do not also protect the banks with the same with modular the thing? <laughs> you could yeah. do more. Yes. Maybe next Friday. Okay, next so. okay. your question. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. As you have uh, mentioned that uh, and soon and that it is uh, used mostly uh, in the flat land. And uh, I'm from Nepal. As and uh, there are like uh, three regions, like uh, uh, Himalayan, High Himalayan, uh, Hilly, and the Torai. Can it be used or intermittent uh, where there is a steep gradient? Or have you gone through such kind of features? So yeah. How steep that can uh, uh, Okay. Or uh, can it be implemented in uh, hydro projects? Implemented in hydro like power. Yeah, like okay, so the first question is: uh, Is it can be implemented in the like upper stream yes. things? Yes. So, in apparently in, in Indonesia, uh, but I don't know how uh, how how what uh, the slope uh, exactly. But the thing is, the this one the Chikara where uh, is placed in the quite uh, upper stream, like uh, near the mountain, uh, in the mountainous area, I mean, uh, in Indonesia. But this Kalisado Weir is in the urban uh, uh, city. So, and this one is near the, like, near the coast. It's just two kilometers again, it's already the coast. So, it is, I mean, uh, we already tried in three, uh, different uh, what you call it, uh, river streams, uh, yeah, different uh, division of uh, river, but yeah, I don't know maybe if, if if it's too steep because if you step up the the blocks, uh, it will uh, because it's already fixed and it will like uh, you need a, a forty five degrees of the. The, the slope of the yeah of the structures yeah. kind of so I think if it's steps below that or I think it's possible but I haven't tried in very steep uh, <laughs> slope yeah and the second is uh, for hydropower yeah I haven't uh, also a lot of uh, feedbacks about the hydropower project if it's still applicable for me it's possible because if you can see uh, the, the main structures like the crest and everything you still have and maybe you only need to put uh, additional part for the uh, maybe you need intakes right to the hydropower things and you need like a, a head different head but I think it's uh, applicable.